to reset on Facebook. They're always doing slow. We're in the shadow of the Mercury retrograde. Welcome, 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 welcome. Coach Kyrie, Team Taurus, Atlanta, Georgia. And we, I want to talk about living your passions, dealing with your enemies, and being in your in, in like discovering your best life. And like I did them in that order for a reason because, like I said, when you come to the planet, you got contracts and you got passions but you're really not that familiar with what they are. So guess what happens um, in your life? It's going to be the enemies that you got contracts with that's also going to bring out the best in you, and they're going to bring your passions out. The people that you're friends with ain't really... What up, uh, what up Gamble? The people, the people that you're friends with are not going to make you dig into your bag and start developing your start, start developing your passions. It's going to be your enemy. What up, Team Leo, New Jersey? Peace, Latifa. What up, Angie Eve? All right, Facebook doing what it's supposed to be doing that. What up, Melba? Press 2 on Facebook if you share this with somebody on your, on your feed. I definitely appreciate that. And press 2 if you're on Instagram and you invited two people. But how do you live your passion? How do you deal with your enemies? And how do you discover your best life? And then after you discover your best life, there's the mastery of the best life. Because you, you ain't going to just be able to get into your best life easily and just be like, oh, I just got into it and now I know what it is and I'm a master at it. I'm still discovering as I master my best life. I've definitely discovered it through a lot of research inside of me. This whole thing now is about going into me. Astrology has to change. Tarot has to change. All the mystical sciences have used to be pointing to outside indicators. Now we have to start going in to deal with us because most of the enemies that you are dealing with, somebody put a curse on you. I got cords I need to cut with somebody. Um, all of this, you know, um, this person's um, putting a root on me. This person did this to me. Patty K, what's up, girl? Yeah, I seen you over there in Afro Astrology, babe. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's all good. It's all good. This will be a good old clarity conversation about this. I'm feeling a little deja vu right now. Thank you for sharing this, Alicia. I appreciate it. Um, Dealing with your enemies. When you came to the planet, you have contracts with your adversaries, and your allies. You got contracts with parents, with children, with teachers, with students. Some of some of you think that you are studying with someone else and you're the student, but there's actually students waiting for you to develop so they can start calling you teacher. I wasn't always a teacher. I had to I had to get my stuff to, I, I had to get myself together in order to become a teacher. Then the people that now call me student, I got cosmic contracts with them. That they was been I've been teaching them a long time, but I wasn't teaching them when I was 14 or when I was 23 or when I was 30 because I had it hadn't developed yet. So I you always got cosmic contracts, but not only with your uh, friends and allies and ancestors, but you got contracts with adversaries. Some people, and I got this from one of my counsel, because when you a wise one, you better have those who are wiser than you. When a sister told me one time, she said, she said, Kaya, you got students that you rejected elsewhere in other galaxies who salty right now because you rejected them and they coming for you. They're coming for revenge. They're coming with hatred in their heart. And I was like, how do I deal with them? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you what she told me. And I'm going to tell you what I know for sure. Because a lot of times when we start looking at magic and sorcery and things like that, we, we tend to skip some steps. One of the first things is being honest with yourself. That's the first, that's the first virtue. Honesty to myself and others at all times. Second one is humility and thoughts, words, and deeds of those above and beneath me. What's your individual constitution? When you develop that, that's how the fruit going to grow. The fruit is a reflection of the seed. What your seed is that you in, that's your, that's your natural composition, then that's going to be what you're displaying. So if, if, if 
you got a lot of things coming at you, triggering you and things like that, then you got a trigger seed. But if you got a lot of people coming to you and say, help me solve this. I need you to help me do this. Help me do that. And your seed is a helper seed. You know what I'm saying? The fruit can't do anything other than what the seed is. So until you transcend it. Now here on earth, we we here with these cosmic contracts to do what? I need somebody to type it out. Growth is the purpose. Everything else is the result. Growth is the purpose. Everything else is the result. Growth is the purpose, everything else is the result. Can I get two people to type that? Growth is the purpose, everything else is the result. So whether you want to go to church, whether you want to be in a synagogue, whether you want to be in the streets, the whole house, prison, practicing magic, whether you or you want to be in tomfoolery, you're going to grow either way. The tree grows either way. The tree grows up, the limbs, and the roots grow down. But it's up to you. The choices you make that are you experiencing top of the tree fruit or you experiencing bottom of the tree roots. All right. It's the choices. But these contracts, you have to grow. Growth is the purpose. Right. So. What do I do with my allies? Everybody always wants to have more allies. Oh, me, where my allies at? Where my allies? Oh, but when you get enemies, you just upset because you're like, they should be my ally. They should be my friend. Why are they turning against me? They're blocking me from something. This right here, they're blocking me. Blocks is what kids play with. Blocks is things you stand on. Blocks is something you build to make a bigger structure. Blocks ain't holding you up from nothing. You stopping yourself from getting on top of the block. Right. So you have to get your weight up to learn to get on top of the block. What, what shape are blocks? Squares? Blocks are square shaped. The masons say what? Stand on top of your square. So if you, I'm looking for something square. That's why I'm just like looking around like this box. Ah, here we go. This box is square. So if I stand on it, I'm going to do like this. This box is square. So if I stand on top of it, it's a good foundation. But... It's square. If I come at it this way, you say, oh, these squares, somebody's blocking me. I could stand up here on it or I could get blocked by it. But I want to get on top of my block and now it supports me. That's what the whole concept in Freemasonry is when they say stand on your square. If it's a challenge, get on top of it and grow. So what up, Team Capricorn? Banner or that Bama? What up, Coco? Thanks, Manisha, for joining. What up, Aries? Yeah, kids play with blocks. So why are we talking about, oh, this, these things that happen because they're contractual? And your allies, the people you like and the people that like you, they're not really going to push you. They're not really going to push you for the best of you to come out. They're really not going to, um, they're not going to create the best self-language for you to come out. Oh, pause. Pause real quick. Um, May 19th in Smyrna, Georgia. Well, if you're going to be in the A you need to go cop some tickets over at MagicalMystic.com and click on the Magical Mystic Expo. Let me just put that out there off the gate. I'm going to be in Atlanta, Georgia on the 19th. And even if I get sick or a scratchy throat and I don't show up, it's already going to be some other heavy hitters there. You do want to be in the building. M. Rain is popping it off. The whole Magical Mystic piece. And it's M-A-G-I-C-K-A-L. MagicalMystic.com. And then click on the expo up at the top. If somebody's in the building, please put that link in there. If you're in the Magical Mystic crew and you know where the link is at, please click that so jokers can get their tickets. Because I got a whole board right here of like what I'm putting together, what I want to bring. I just want to just shut the whole, not shut the party down. I want to blow the whole roof off of it because I'm the only dude, right? And some of my enemies, some of my enemies is pushing me to make me grow. So I want to do some growth up in this piece and help other people grow at the same time. Now, what does the enemies do for you? You VIP in that piece? What up, Alicia? Thank you. Can you please post the website so people can go straight to the link and get their tickets? Absolutely. Magical Mystic. That's it. Dot com. That's it. On Instagram. That's it. Right there. M Rain. You probably can just type a name. E M M E R A I N. I think is that it. Uh, I think. I, I am. You know, I ain't trying to misspell your last name, but I know it's E M M E. You start typing an R to go in there. There it is. Cash flow typed it in. Appreciate that. 
Um, what up, Tina JD? What do you do about your enemies? Your enemies are going to push you. They have a contract to be your adversary. The person that you got a cord with, that you want to cut, that's holding you back, or the person that put a spell on you, or the person that's like causing suffering in your life, you got a contract with them. Let me let that settle for a second. Because you just like, wait a minute. I got a contract? I got a contract with my enemy? Yep. Because he's trying to kill you. He's trying to kill you. He's trying to kill some part of you. He's trying to kill some part of you financially, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, whatever. He may come in the form of a baby daddy, a baby mama, a father, a mother, a son, a daughter. Do you know most people when they go to court, it's family members taking other people to court? It's... um. What do you, uh, it's family members shooting each other. Domestic violence is so big because it's the family that's coming. You got enemies inside of your household. Right. They're going to push you. They're going to push you to go step past what your normal levels are to move on to higher spaces. And then guess what? That's how you grow because growth is the purpose. If you didn't have that to instigate you, then you might just, you know what I'm saying? You might just start... Um, devolving instead of evolving. I don't like revolving. You might, you could be on a revolve, but then the revolve could go lower. But if you got it and you decide, yo, I can't be dealing with this from this enemy and I have to go and think, calculate like chess to be, what am I going to do about this? First off, when you're dealing with your enemies, be thankful. Be thankful for your enemies because they build your character. Thank you for your enemy because your enemy is possibly your soulmate and holding the mirror for you to see your own shit. They pushing buttons for you that you probably didn't want to push yourself. That's getting you one step closer to your own personal freedom. Yeah, they got to instigate. There's got to be some instigation. There's got to be a detonation. A lot of people come to me and they say, coach. If you was a little less, um, what up, Donica, Teresa? If you just got on Instagram, please invite two more people. If you just got on Facebook, please press two if you share this on your page or if you share this in a group. Somebody please share this in Let's Talk Magic. I don't know why they're not letting me share it. So, um, but I'm just doing the best I can right now. So I want to be aware of my enemy and thankful. And then I want to move like chestnut checkers. So remember um, the Osiris, Isis, Horus, Set story, or Osir, Aset, Set, and Heru. Heru was upset and was in his emotional feelings about his enemy, his uncle Set, who chopped his father up into 13 pieces. And he ran up on him like... <laughs> Kill my father. Ah, you're my enemy. And he wanted all the smoke. And what happened? Boop. He loses an eye. He loses an eye. That's why the one-eyed jack is Horus on the deck of cards. Right? Um. So, then he leaves and goes back and get the wisdom from Tahuti, Toph, Dejanti, and then rolls back up on set for the victory. But he had to be calculative. So you have to be calculative when you're dealing with your enemy. Because you have to realize what is he here for. He will kill you. But the really base of it is he's really helping you build your character. Tina DG said, my grandma is the enemy. When you can confess that a family member is the enemy, you one step closer to your own personal freedom. Because a lot of times you think that your family members are supposed to be your allies. That's romance. I done told y'all a thousand times. Stop being so damn romantic. Stop being so damn romantic. It's 80% relationship science, 20% romance. Too much romance is like too much icing on the cake. You don't really see it for what it really is. So that's how you leave in the wall of suffering. Your enemy is trying to keep you at the wall of suffering. See how my back is pinned to this chair? It's trying to keep you like a Velcro suit. You're trying to get up and it's pulling you back to the chair. It's pulling you back to the chair. 
You got to take off your Velcro suit. Most of the time, your Velcro suit is your family when you're trying to grow. Peace, Baba Kalindi. When you're trying to grow, you got to leave family behind sometimes. Because as Baba Kalindi taught us, and helped me realize, really helped me remember, is you got a spiritual house that you're supposed to be in. You suppose you 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 are a member of your house, but if you don't know who your who your peoples are, your enemies will help you realize what your spiritual who who who's in your spiritual house, who's loyal to you, who's got your back, who's feeding you the proper type of spiritual food and spiritual nourishment, and then you start to form alliances with them. But when you got alliances, yeah, you got some type of protection, but they ain't gonna push you like an enemy will. Now you ain't necessarily got to go out and start looking for enemies, but guess what? They're going to always be there because you got a contract with them. They're chasing your ass. They're following you around from dimension to dimension. Your allies are following you from dimension to dimension. Your lovers are following you from dimension to dimension. Your students are following you from dimension to dimension. Your teachers are following you from dimension to dimension. Shaman Derek, what it do? You didn't come here solo by yourself this whole thing peace brother blondell down there in texas you didn't come down here um to get this you only live once you keep reincarnating until you get it right and your enemy is gonna push you but you ain't always gotta like let me go and retaliate there's gonna be some conflict but you better understand how to go in when you engage what is the what what's proper conduct in the engagement, especially if it gets physical? If it gets physical, then you gotta understand and be trained in combat, martial sciences, martial arts, and that's even in your thinking pattern, right? Where does the sorcery come in at? Some of your greatest enemies and your biggest enemies will introduce you to sorcery. Because then you got to get back into, they're going to push you into your true passion. When Horace went to fight Set, he was passionate about it. He lost the eye. He got a big lesson off of that. Then when he came back with the wisdom from Tehuti and he was victorious, he was able to operate out of wisdom then. And then he knew what his passion was. He knew what his passion was. And now he said, let me integrate what my passion is in how I live my best life. Which is one of the advantages in you're growing. While you're growing, what should you do? You should just be discovering. You should be discovering. That's why I like uh, what Dr. Gibson and Kalinde say it. Now I say it. I'm a student of the multiverse. And the only way is to push the envelope. The only way I can win or do this or advance is by pushing the envelope. I ain't going back. I looked at how far I came, right? I looked at the distractions that I've been running into recently by some so-called enemies. I was like, man, I could just stop and turn around and go back. But it's more expensive to go back than it is to go forward. Can somebody type that? It's more expensive to go back than it is to proceed. It's cheaper to proceed than to go back. You could type any way you want to type it up. It's cheaper to go forward than to go backwards. So why not proceed? Why not just pay the cost and keep moving forward? Why not? Why not? Just move forward versus, oh, it's so hard. I'm tired. I'm this, I'm that. No, because the only way that you're going to get to self-mastery is through self-discovery. And self-discovery comes through proceeding, the procession. It's how you learn it's how you learn things, and then after you learn it, it becomes a part of you. You really don't think of tying your shoe as a skill because you've done it so many times. It's innate or inhaling and exhaling or rubbing your face. It's innate. Cutting your fingernails. It's innate. Picking up a pen and writing something. It's innate, you know, but it was the practice of this craft that let you discover what you could do with this pen. I could write with this pen. I could point to certain things. I could scratch my back. If I get in trouble, I could even close the pen like this. I could use this end as a weapon if I really wanted to. 
I could separate this and go. I could go into a fight with these two right here. It's up to me how I access it. But oh, <laughs> Melissa said that she used to hate uh, here trust the process. No, guess what? Trust what people show you, and then you got to trust what you show yourself. What have you shown yourself? If you don't proceed and move forward, then you ain't gonna have nothing. To, you, you ain't gonna have no personal experiences in your own discovery. And then you are gonna look at somebody else and be like, "Oh, that's my role model. Oh, look at Shaman Derek. He's doing this. Oh, look at Kalinda. He's doing this. Oh, look at him. He's doing that. Oh, look at that." And then you know how they got to where they at? Cause they were proceeding. They never quit. They never turned around and went backwards. It was a whole thing about discovering who they were. M told me. She said, "Yo, Coach." When I started studying and I started to make a switch, I said, I got to go all in. And that's the only way. She, she said, I burned bridges behind me so I could get where I needed to get to. I don't even worry about whether a bridge collapses behind me or, or burns or whatever. I'm not here to be politically correct. I ain't here to make a whole bunch of friends. I ain't here to like even keep longstanding friends. Those who are in my spiritual house, they're going to be with me. Those who show me that they enemies or they show me they where they at, guess what? I deal with them as I respond to that. I don't trip or set trip or nothing like that. I just move through it. What up, Nat say? Thanks for coming through. Daniel, I think it's difficult starting over, but it's better than going backwards. A quote I live by, can't go back. Right. So what have you shown yourself? Right. It's fine what somebody else can show you. I can show you what you can do with astrology. I can show you what you can do with the breath. I can show you how to build a website. I can show you different things like dealing with cards or management or relationships or recovering from loss. That's really one of my masteries. <gasps> Woo! Bounce back. You know how they say a cat always land on his feet or got nine lives? I know I done been through seven of mine. I'm being real careful now because I might only have two left. But I'm a master at that. You feel what I'm saying? And, and it's because I discovered it that it's tough to kill me. Then I realized now it's, it's so tough to kill me. And it got tougher to kill me when I stopped believing in death. When I start, re when I start realizing that death was a disease that was curable. And that mostly I was carrying it in my mind. Uh, uh. Do you know it's like, it's records of thousands of people not dying and turning themselves into bodies of light and just leaving and their clothes just fall down. It just The clothes that they had on just be like, Phew. there's monks who meditated and just took their energy out of their body and just left their bodies sitting there in that same meditative position. They didn't die. They just transcended. And then they have on record people talking about this light outside of their house or hut or temple where it looked like the rainbow bridge. When you go back and look at Thor, you got the black dude, you got uh, Idris, who got the pretty eyes, who's like keeping over the, watching the bridge, that rainbow bridge. Just type in rainbow bridge and, and body of light. It's several volumes of work that are out there written on this that's actual proof. We have that in our Tibetan tradition. We And see, here we go. We claim things and say, oh, it's our Tibetan tradition. Maybe the Tibetans just preserved it. Just like black people may have preserved eating watermelon or frying chicken. It's everybody. It, it can be everybody's tradition. But it, And it better be your tradition as soon, sooner than later because if you keep believing in death, then your passion will never be discovered. Your enemy will always conquer you. You'll never discover what your best life is. And you'll never taste the mastery of it. I want to taste the mastery of the things that I've discovered. I haven't been eating lamb all my life. Nor oatmeal. And I like both of them now. I've lived much longer without oatmeal and lamb. But now that I've discovered them... I want to try to cook them in different ways to get different flavors and get different results out of them. Yes, I ain't no vegetarian unless I'm at your house or unless you treating. If you treating, then I'm eating. Yeah, I'm a spiritual meat eater. 
Blondell said you can go into the past, correct the situation that will affect the future. That's for you advanced people. That's that's for real. But you can't you 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 don't even understand how to go back into the past, fix certain things unless you pushing and proceeding. You can't quit and turn around and regress and think that you're gonna win. I'm all for I'm all for snatching that victory out of my enemy's mouth. I got a little edge on me sometimes. Some people say, well, it might be pride. It may be some, 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 something, whatever. But did you ever watch the show MASH and um, Hawkeye Pierce? He was in there. He was, um, what up, CR22? Peace to the fam. Shayla Tumlin's in the building. Curry Lamb, absolutely. The true rapture. Shayla, what you mean? I missed that. I'm just looking down. Hold on, CR22. I'm going to get to you in a minute before I bring you on. Um... But in MASH, it was a hospital that specialized in surgery for men being brought from the front lines. And the doctors were just surgeons. They weren't like general practitioners where you told somebody something like walk more, drink more water, X, Y, Z, yada, yada, yada. You know what I'm saying? It was... They came in, they was already shot up, and you had to save their life real quick. That's kind of like the squad I'm on. By the time somebody gets to Coach Kyrie, it's already some type of emergency. I got to get the bullet out. I got to save a leg, save an arm, save a life. Tragedy, conflict. You know why I can do that and have done it so much? Because I found myself on the operating table. I found myself um, not... Uh, um, having to get my life saved and being in conflict and in those type of situations and wondering how do I how do I manifest the way up out of this joint and the only way that it's going to happen is through me pressing the envelope uh Shayla said when you were talking about people transmitting into light and not actually dying it made me think about my Christian upbringing and how we were taught about the rapture there'd be a time when Christ return and people will be transmuted or taken up into heaven without dying. That would just call my first connection, my mind, when you said that. Oh, right. The rapture, you can do that personally. You can do that personally. What up, Omaria? How's everything over in the Afro Astrology group? Interesting, ain't it? I'm really just so happy about how I continue to just push. And my job is to inspire you to not quit. Now, you definitely have an option that if you would like to quit and pull over and try that, you can do it. What up, uh, Lisa? Yourself. Ah, green dragon for my man. Absolutely. One of my big brothers. So, you got to get into your passion, though. See, I like it when I like it when I got a little bit of opposition to make it a little tough, and then they start bringing riled, uh, uh I get kind of riled up, and then I fall back into my passion bag. See, if you got a passion bag, where well, you can start digging in there, start digging into your herbs, digging into your tank, digging into your toolbox that you done put in there. You start grabbing the stuff up out of there. And you trust what's in your bag. Do you trust what's in your bag? I just got these right here from a friend of mine. She's about to start selling these right here. I'm going to help her. And you just go in the bag and you just pull out one of the crystals and it says, Focused Pharmacist. Can y'all see that? Focused, Focused Pharmacist. So it's telling me the focused. I'm supposed to be the Focused Pharmacist. So now when I get into something, I dig into my bag. And I get passionate about what is it that I'm focusing on. If that wasn't enough, I go back, I drop it in my cup. I got a little cup. I go back in there and say, well, what else do I need? And I pull out another one. Ooh, look at that right there. I'm talented. Talented teacher. I'm a talented teacher. That's in my bag. So I go back down in there and I put my passion now 
on being focused and on being a talented teacher. Then what are we going to do then? Leo Queen, I'll see you up in the building. What up, Deb's Corner? Thanks for coming over. Please invite two people if you on Instagram and press two if you on Facebook and you share this on your page. And also introduce yourself. I'm Coach Kyrie, Team Taurus, Atlanta, Georgia. And especially let me know. Um, press two if you share this. Press one if you're going to be coming to the Magical Mystic Expo on May the 19th in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. Magical Mystic Expo. And you can just type in Magical Mystic Expo. And I think somebody had typed in the link earlier. If somebody types it in again, I'll pin it up there. But um, yeah, go get your tickets now. It's going to be ridiculous. Right. So when you start discovering what your passion is and then somebody come up and be like, oh, well, I'm going to stop you from I'm going to stop you from I'm going to stop you from your passion. You're going to do what? You're going to stop me from doing what? That's how you're supposed to look at somebody when somebody when, when really when somebody comes and they say, I'm going to put some blocks in front of you. I want to put a spell on you. Or oh, I got some cords on you. Or oh, I got some you got some cords you need to cut or oh, you got darkness around you. You have to look at darkness. You have to look at darkness and say, what you say? Huh? You gonna do what? You gonna try to stop me? How you gonna try to stop me? You should become an ally. You better pick your team wisely. You wanna come against me and my passions? You wanna come against me and my ancestors? You wanna come at me and my bag and me and my resources? I love it. Because when you honorable, when you honorable and you're going to do these particular things, all of a sudden you have the weight of the universe coming behind you to shed light on what really needs to be seen. You'll see what's in the crevices. You'll see what's behind the corner. And listen, when you, and when you start seeing jokers like trying to come for you or throw dirt at you, or throw shade at you, or throw darkness at you, you just dig into your passion bag. You give them more of your best life. You show them that you are a self-discoverer. You don't have to feed the beast. Because remember, all stories that you start to honor is the jacked up narrative that gives your enemy more power. So how do you defeat your enemy? You starve them. It's your energy, the, your, your, your enemy's trying to hold on to you and siphon off your energy. They're trying to eat off your energy. But they can't. They can't eat off your energy. They trying though real hard. Oh, let me get that. It's not going to work unless you give it to them. I voluntarily give my enemy my energy. And I voluntarily take my energy away from it. Situations happening in Coach Kyrie's life where the enemy came for me. First thing I did was just not respond. I pulled all the oxygen out of the room. And then they kept going because they were gasping for breath. If you're on Instagram, my battery's about to die, so you might want to come over to Facebook and come on my page, Kyrie Carter, because I can't make the battery go longer on Instagram, and I ain't finished saying what I got to say, so you might want to shoot over to my Facebook page when, this, when my um, iPad dies. Visualize myself in the mirror. And I really like getting at the scary side of me. I like it when my enemy come and um, I ain't really, sh you know what I'm saying? Like, you have to press some buttons to get the light to shine in some corners to see who's in your spiritual house. You can see some people are homeless. Some people are spiritually homeless. Some people don't really want to, like, um, they just want to go around and set fires. That's what they do. They want to go around and set fires and try to manipulate others. That's an enemy. If they want to manipulate you, hmm. Some people don't want to. Some people want to go around and just be led all the time, all the time. At some point or another, you're gonna to have to stand on your own and start creating. That's how you going That's pressing the envelope. Yeah, visualize myself as a mirror. Ooh, visualize myself as a mirror. That's when my enemy, you're right, when my enemy show up, I can just put myself, I, I am a mirror. So now whatever you're casting upon me, you're catching it. Whew. That's some funk right there. Yeah, it's some people out there that are spiritually homeless. They don't, have a, they don't have a spiritual family or a spiritual household. And 
I'm sorry, they do have, most homeless people do have family, but they don't stay in their spiritual house because they don't want to put the dedication in, or they don't want to stick to the rules, or they're, or, or they're out here following um, just other things, or you make an order, or they're making several excuses for why they don't have. And then they want, and then they want to play the victim. There are no victims and villains. Can somebody type that? There are no victims and villains. That's a myth. Out here in this whole sorcery thing, my enemy is the one I gave power to. So I, if if I take power back from it, I ain't got no more enemies. Yeah. So that's the whole thing about when you're dealing with your enemy. The game is about give me my energy back. You don't get no more of my energy. You so that's fine. You made me dig into my passion bag. You made me discover some more things about me and build my character. And then guess what? Now I done cut off all connections. I done cut the power off. Like a cell phone. If I cut the cell phone off, you may have my number. But I choose whether I answer. A lot of y'all are up under dark magic attack because you're picking the phone up. You're not letting it go to voicemail. You're letting somebody else dictate um, whether you give them energy or not. There are no victims or villains. There are no victims or villains. And I dictate whether you get to utilize my energy or not. Because my energy is my commodity. Can everybody type that? My energy is my commodity. My most precious commodity is my energy and my time. So sometimes when I say I get mixed up with somebody like a so, because sometimes it might be a so-called enemy. It just might be a janitor posing out of the energy, as a, you know, as an enemy, so they can get some energy from me, so they can eat another meal. No, nah, I'm gonna starve you. You could have came over here and become an ally. But after that, once that happens, you just deal with it. And you own your stuff. You own your error, whatever your error is or was. You own it for what it is because if you own your error a person can't take your error and try to use it as some type of weapon to threaten you hold you hostage a lot of y'all are being held spiritually hostage by these enemies because you let them hold the knife uh take the knife back and let them know you stop um you let you shouldn't be letting these little children play with sharp objects because that's normally, if somebody got that much time to be coming for you, then they're a child. Most of the enemies that come for you are very immature in their own spiritual growth. They're spiritually immature people. Right. And they're playing with sharp objects. I told you the other night on my show, there's two tables. It's a grown-up table and a kitty table. On the kitty table, they ran there throwing spaghetti up against the wall, trying to slander you, going to do magic against you. It costs me money to do a spell against you. It costs me money to go dig up some candles or do something on you, or put, or, or put my energy into that. So I'm, I don't want to. I, I don't got time to be throwing. That's that's waste of my energy. I want to put my energy into my knife cutting up this curry lamb and these shish kebabs and this basmati rice, and then pass me the, pass me the hummus, pass me the pass me the kalalu, pass me the ackee and saltfish. Pass me the oxtails. Pass me the, 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 the vegan butternut squash. And you don't get all that at the kitty table. You just getting some spaghettis in a sippy cup. It's too many of y'all letting the people at the, at, the, at the kids' table. Put your enemy at the kids' table. Let them sip on the sippy cup. Yeah. Why are you, why are you devoting your energy to them? They have not. Then let them stay having not. Andrea is in the building. They have not. So why are you sitting there sponsoring them? They're a hater. Right. They really want to come through with the victim villain type thing. Ugh. Ah, 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 ah. You got all the power of who plays with sharp objects or not. What do they have over at the kitty table with the immature? Are? And the children are going to grow up. They grow up one day and they'll be true. And, and like one day they may help cooking the turkey. But right now all they're doing is bringing out the napkins. But if you give them too much responsibility, they turn into your enemies. Right. And then they just create a mess. The 
careful not to have too many kids sitting at the kids' table and never let them sit at the grown folks' table. Never let your enemies sit at the grown folks' table. Go back to work on what you're doing. Let them have the plastic spoons. That's normally what they eat out of. They don't even have forks at the little kid table. They can't even put the nap. They have to tie bibs around their neck. It's grown people, 30s, 40s, 50s, trolling you, and you giving them energy back. What we said the other night, what well, Hov say, never argue with the fool because from a distance you ain't tell, you can't tell who's who. If I'm sitting there going back and forth with these kids, then guess what? If the wise man come along, he don't know what he he don't know who to share wisdom with. Because I'm arguing with the fool. He like, well, I don't know who started it. But you still in it. So you cut the head. No, paper plates and plastic spoons, Melissa. Paper plates and plastic spoons. They don't even get that. They don't get forks. Right. You know they're going to make a mess. They got a little low table over there. Over here, we got cutlery. We got <sighs> salads, tomatoes, cucumbers, arugula seasoning they don't get no salt at the table you put the salt on their food for them it's already seasoned what up yanetta thanks for joining press two if you shared this video let me see who over here did you share the video press two did you introduce yourself because i'm coach kyer team taurus atlanta georgia that's how i like folks if you're new to my channel if you send me a friend request please send me a message and let me know where you come from because i just don't accept friend requests holla I really only like friend requests from people who like to meditate. Sporks, right? Sporks versus fine china. Thank you, Latifa, for sharing. Appreciate that, Tasha. Right. Also, please somebody type in magicalmystic.com so I can link that so y'all can go get your tickets to the Magical Mystic Expo. Right. Go to Magical Mystic. Come to the Magical Mystic Expo. It's a celebration of sovereignty, divinity, and true liberation. The 2019 Expo theme is Rise of the Divine Feminine and is dedicated to Lilith and Oya and all of the goddesses who have risen to e elevate the vibration of this planet. Indeed, the return of the mother is a gift to all, both male and female. Oh, now, I didn't know it was for Lilith and Oya. Guess what's finna happen? I got a whole... Nobody's gonna be talking... Astrologically, I gotta talk about Lilith now. I'll be doing an astrological presentation on Lilith. I'll also be talking about um, what your third eye is for, uh, the journey of self-discovery. I'm going to be talking a little bit about relationships, how to utilize Lilith in your relationships. Um, I'm going to be talking about optimism versus the machete. I'm going to talk about leaning not on your own understanding. I'm going to be also talking about how to cure loneliness through the law of attraction. It's going to be intense. I got a whole board over here of things. Should I? I ain't showing you. You good. Andre, what it do? I see you, Dre. Ah, there it is. Can I, can I pin that? Ah, there we go right there. That's it right there. If you ain't got your tickets yet, I just pinned it. Magical. Magicalmystic.com forward slash Magical Mystic Expo. Oh, the the, 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 the Lilith piece is going to be crazy. The Lilith piece, I bet you you walk out of there with your blue belt in astrology. Yeah, I bet you you walk out of there with your blue belt, your, your blue belt in astrology. Man, some of my enemies said something about my astrological prowess. If you take astrology from me, I'm still a businessman. I'm still a teacher. I'm still a martial artist. I do all of them well. Never be a one-trick pony. Never let... See, your enemy will try to use that. Your enemy will try to play you and try to get you to even distract you into thinking that you might be a one-trick pony. You try to say I'm not good at something and then I go and try to defend this. It doesn't matter whether somebody's better than me, better than me in something else. It's too much competition. That's the problem I have. Even in relationships with divine feminine energy. If you know who you are and your divine feminine, 
the whole um, self-worth thing should be a thing of the past. It should be something that doesn't even ever come up. Ever. So what you do is proceed with passion. I think that should, should that be my joint? Let me write that down. Can I can I do that? Can proceed with passion be my joint? Proceed with passion. Y'all like that? I think that's gonna be the name of my topic. Proceed with passion at the Magical Mystic Expo. I want to thank everybody. If you like that, on a scale of 1 to 10, what do you like that? I mean, tell me if you like that. Proceed with passion. If you think that I should talk about that at the at the Magical Mystic Expo, on um, a scale of 1 to 10, what do you think with that? You like that? Oh, I, I did. I, I just jotted it down. Right. Yeah, I, I, being a one-trick pony man. See, this is the other thing from the 48 Laws of Power. Your enemy normally is going to be jealous of you. And one of the ways to do away with the enemy is remain cool, calm, and collective. And jealousy is a fire. And it consumes itself. So what you do is you let the jealousy of your enemies consume themselves. But if you rush in there and get too con too much of a conflict with them and let them pull you in, because misery loves company. You ever heard misery loves company? Press press 11 if you've ever heard misery loves company. Niamo, help me out then. You got to inbox me what the subtitle is. Proceed with passion. Well, I got some subtitles, but let's talk about it. Yeah. So, why would I want to be pulled in to um, why would I want to be pulled into somebody else's consuming fire hey Lotus Love because misery loves company is so strong so strong that's what your enemy normally will come. That, that, that's normally the first way for you to identify who's an enemy. Because listen, if you had some business of your own, what would, how would you be fighting somebody else? If you was already prosperous and living in abundance, then you wouldn't even have no time to be out here causing conflict. Right, but if you got too much time on your hand and you miserable, guess what you're looking for? Company. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. You think somebody put a spell on you. You know why they put a spell on you? Because they want some company. Ooh. Never be a one trick. Never be a one. Never be a. Proceed with passion and never be a one trick pony. I guess I can type that on them. I don't know if I'm feeling that like that, but I'm still writing. it. Never be a one trick pony. I'm open for all ideas. I'm also going to be in Las Vegas. I think I'm supposed to be in Vegas at the end of June. Remember I said I thought it was going to be in May? I think it's now it's been moved back to June. Yeah, that's close. But misery, people who are miserable, they love enemies. They love conflict. They love... Um, They love the banter of going back and forth. When you get around people that are miserable, miser misery and passion don't go together. Most people aren't passionate about their misery. If they want to come out of their misery, they should tie into their passion. Some people they get, but some of the one trick ponies, they claim that what they claim something is their passion, but then it turns around and it's it's, 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 it's not. It becomes their prison cell. It becomes their prison cell. Instead of a passion, it becomes a prison cell. We could do that one too. Proceed with passion and get out of your prison. I like that one. Proceed with passion and get out of your prison. I like that. Can we do that? Proceed with passion and get out of your prison. Can I do that one? Y'all think about that. What up, Frenet? 
For me, I think y'all just went and seen M, you and Carol. She's coming to Atlanta, and I'm the only male speaker. And she's talking about Lilith and Oya. Sad they out the cipher. No, it ain't, it ain't never sad. Never, never, never think about that. You like that one? Proceed with passion and get out of your prison. Yeah. <laughs> and stay out of your stay out of your inner prison. That's too much detail. I gotta get them out before I can tell them to stay out. Got some haters that are attention seekers and always want pats on the back. They thrive off of recognition. The people I know who are excelling are doing it quietly. Say what, Leighton Gray? Ooh. I know that's right. I know that's right. Proceed with passion and escape your prison. I like that. Whoever who, who said that? Escape. Can I do astrology? I'm, somebody give them an astrology. I'm, I'm doing two astrology readings right quick before I get out of here. Yeah, I just off, off the gate. Just let me pull up. Let me pull up something real quick. And um, anybody, anybody want to get their chart done? Um, I'm gonna write down. From one to from one to thirty, from one to thirty, I'm gonna write a number down right here. Uh, the people, the, the three people who are the closest, I'm gonna do your chart. I'm gonna do a quick mini reading, right quick, just a stunt. So I just wrote the number down right here. We're gonna see who's psychic. So I got the number on this side right here. So from one to thirty, just guess what the number is. Guess what the number is, and the three people who are the closest. I'm gonna tell you, okay? No, no, ain't any use of raising your hand. What up, Mocha? Oh, I see a lot of me's in. I, I live astrology. Yep. Oh. Okay. Oh, what? Okay, 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 okay. Everybody, you only get one guess too. Some of y'all just gotta read. I see some of y'all in here already already gotta read. Y'all trying to double back. Why do y'all why why y'all doing that? Why are some of y'all trying to double back? You already got to read. I should have said this for somebody who ain't got to read them before. That will make it fair, okay? Oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay, okay. The number, so we know it's, know, it, know it's a fact. 26. So I saw one person, Mercedes, she had 26 up here. I saw a bunch of 25s. I saw at least four 25s. And I seen a, I, so if you got 26, uh, 25, or 27, I did see a 27. So you got 25, 26, 27, I'm getting ready to do you. So put your number up here. So if you had 26, put your birthday up. So first off, just let me see the 26th birthday first. Let me see the 26th birthday first. Right. Let me see the 26th birthday first and then we're just gonna get into a little something real quizzic. It's gonna be something fast. Now if you got a question, you can ask me, but I'm gonna just, just you know, off the top, we're just gonna, we're just gonna look at a couple of things, not a couple of things. We're not gonna be on here long, okay? Mercedes, you ain't putting your birthday in. Let's get it popping. So put your birthday in if you had 25, 
25, 26, or 27. I know it was four of y'all that had 25 up here. So I'm waiting on Mercedes' birthday. She said, I know you said 26. So, right. Oh, it would be right. 12, 28, 88. 12, 28, 88. Bong, bong. Take five off that. People drop off when they be like, oh, my, y'all shouldn't go nowhere just because somebody else is getting a reading. I'm just saying. Ah, Miss Virgo rising. Well, you're not a Virgo rising, but you got a moon in Virgo. So I'm going to come at it like that. All right. For the ladies, you can just put the moon in the first house and rock from there. Oh, you're having a Saturn return right now. You want to know about Lilith. Lilith is raw sexual energy. And if she's in your first house and you are Virgo, you got Lilith in the first house, then it's um, that's the energy that people see when you walk in the room. It's a very, very strong raw sexual energy when you walk into the room so people are always going to be ap approaching you sexually they're going to be trying to do something right off the gate there's no need for you to get frustrated when i i, I tell people who got little than the first scorpio risings um uh, pluto in the first you're gonna to have to learn all about the different type of sexual arts tantra uh s transmutation of energy karma sutra sex magic because it's your energy, so then use it. Don't try to run from it and be like, I can't believe you keep coming at me sexually. No, it's your energy for you to utilize. It's for you to become passionate about your own sexual energy and what to do with it. Um, Virgo is I plan, I organize, you know? So it kind of puts a little bit of, but Lilith can be a little um, manipulative with her energy, you know what I'm saying? To grind on somebody, not grind on somebody, but not like in dancing or a body, but it can just be a little manipulative. For you, I would just go to YouTube, type up Lilith Peace Dealer Virgo. He has the best YouTube videos on Lilith. That's my man. Oh, yes. Lilith and Virgo. Yeah, so just type in Lilith and Virgo Peace Dealer. Type in Lilith in the first house, peace dealer, peep him out. And don't be ashamed of that. Because that means you got the dark moon and and your regular moon in the, in the first house. So you're very empathic. You pick up on people's energy very quick. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah. that's. But you're going through a Saturn return right now. You better put some focus on that. You've been, you've been going through a Saturn return for over a year now. So I would put more focus on um, what you're leaving behind, what patterns you need to let go of. You have a stellium in Capricorn. Um, and what you gonna do with that energy, Shawty? You know what I'm saying? In the fifth house, you don't have any children, do you? Well, I don't, I mean, I didn't rectify the chart yet, but yeah, you got five planets in Capricorn. It's all about your character right now. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the Tantra book is Jewel in the Lotus. That's where we start. Okay, who's next? Who 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 had 26 or where one of the 25s at? Hopefully that was helpful, Mercedes. I see Gilmore Misses had Gilmore Misses had a 27 September 
September 29th, 1976. Some over here, spinning around a little bit. Ain't nothing like Cosmoposm, boy. I'm telling you. I'm gonna be doing a class here shortly on like how you like go further into reading your own chart, especially um, rec um, rectifying it, making sure you got the right time of birth. It's about time more people than the people who've been holding on to that know how to do that. Oh, moon and Sagittarius. Oh, you cannot just put your birthday down. I'm not reading it. Just you put your birthday down. If you guessed 25, 26, or 27, those are the people I'm doing the chart for. Right now, I'm doing Gilmore Misses, September 29, 1976. And let me also see uh, what her card is. Oh. September 29th. You're an eight of hearts. What's up, girl? Yeah. Cards of your destiny. I put it all together. I like using cards of your destiny, astrology, and my own particular intuition. So I think I'm more of an intuitive astrologer. Go run tell that. I'm an intuitive astrologer now. I can switch up when I feel like it. I love it. So eight of hearts, that magical love, peace, um, you, your emotions, you got Venus and you got Jupiter. You got a question? Where's Miss Gilmore misses? Do you have a do you have a question? Anything specifically? You have to put your number first. Which number did you guess? And then your birthday. So Melissa Coleman Dennis, I'm not doing your birthday because I don't know what number you picked. And I'm not going to scroll back. So this is the honor system. So you type in what your number was, and then your birthday beside it. When people put that on there, then I will know that you're one of those people. All right? Um, you like freedom, Miss uh, Miss Mrs. Miss Gilmore, Mrs. You you big into your you big into freedom. Um, like you don't like being locked down. Very spontaneous. Love to travel. Um, Love philosophy. Probably then got into a couple, you know, heated debates in your life. You like a sharp conversation. Um, you like texting people in relationships. You like intelligent people. Um, yeah, you really like intelligent people, smart people. You don't like dummies in relationships. Um, boy, when you finish with somebody, you finish with them. But you're ridiculously loyal. You're ridiculously loyal. And you know, in just your normal relationships, Venus and Scorpio is normally there's a you, you're giving off a lot of sexual energy too, for sure. What's up with your love life? I don't know what's up with your love life. You know, I'm just telling you what you know, but you know what you're working with a little bit, but I can't really get too far into what your love life is about. Um, where's your Saturn at? Saturn's in Leo. You're going to have a Saturn opposition next year. So what's that? 12, 10, 12, oh, 12 11, 10, 9, 8, 9. You love being in relationships, but you're kind of argumentative, though. Why you be starting? Why you be starting stuff in relationships? Do you be starting... You, you, have you been involved in some domestic violence, or do you get in aggressive arguments? You gotta learn how to talk to talk to a man. If you want a relationship, you gotta work on your communication skills. That's off the top what I got for you because you're so smart. And sometimes that mouth of yours gets you in trouble in your relationship. You ever put some hands on somebody, Miss Gilmore? Good question. Thank you, Miss Gilmore, Mrs. That's just that's it for you. Let me get to some. Who else? Uh, Abu, you had 25. All right. September the 5th, 
coachkastrology.info if somebody would like to get a full session. See what you got here, Abu. Peace to the God. He guessed 25. There was a lot of y'all around it. All of y'all went with the high numbers. Y'all like really psychic. Well, I was pushing the number out there real hard. Back this thing on up a little bit to about 6 in the morning. Here. Let me see what Abu got going on. Mm -hmm. Team Virgo in the building. Team Virgo in the building. Abu, I see you out here. Let's see what's popping. Abu, I shouldn't even give you no reading because you don't even want to come out and check a brother out. You got a stellium in Virgo, so you just damn technical as hell. You know what I'm saying? It's got to be planned out. You hate when drugs deviate from the plan. Um, you the organizer. That's why you always got a plan. You always got rhymes like you do. You're very, it's, it's, you're very, you're very tactical. Oh, and you love so hard. Ooh, that's why you got that borderline pimpish in you. Because you got Moon and Venus conjuncting Cancer. The ladies love you. Anybody with, and, and Abu is pretty, ladies. When you put your eyes on him, he just got, anybody got Venus and Cancer is very attractive. So when the ladies see him or even men see him, Abu probably has a, t since he in, be in Atlanta, he got to tell dudes like, yo, I'm straight. I don't deal with that. Yo, I only deal with the chicks. I don't deal with dudes. But Abu is very attractive to many people. But the ladies already just fall into what he got going on. And his little girl, he he's defenseless because he loves to take care of people and nurture people, especially with the ones that he in relationships with. But his but his but his children are first. And at a party, Abu is bringing all the favorites, and he's going around making sure everybody is straight. They get offended, talk easily. But no domestic violence. Okay. Thank you, Deshaun D. Yeah, that's for you, Abu. What else you got going on? Oh, man. Abu, you don't want to get in a fight with Abu either. Or when he, when Abu cut you off, he finished with you too. And he got all that sexual energy. Abu, you ever thought about being a phone sex operator? You got Scorpio on the third with, with Mars and Scorpio. That's why them lyrics are so... Peace. Ladies, you better be careful because if Abu come at you, he mess around and talk you right out of something. Right quick. CoachKAstrology.info 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 Melissa. Um, who Who's next? Is anybody else in here? Because I can go ahead and get off of here real quick. Okay. Melissa Coleman Dennis, July the 2nd, 1970. July the 2nd, 1970. Oh, hold on. I got to see what, um, I got to see what Abu's card is. September the 5th, Six of Diamonds. Abu has to always pay his debts off. He don't like owing nobody no money. He can't stand when somebody owe him some money. He ain't going for that. And Melissa, July 2nd, King of Diamonds, King of Hearts. Melissa, you a terrible employee. You got to have your own business, player. Right. It's been past your time. You have to be the owner or operator or work as a contractor. Yeah, Melissa, you, I mean, not that you can't get no job, but you do better working for yourself. Oh, do you use your hands? You probably a massage therapy, some type of business where you're talking. She's all, you're also very intuitive. You damn near empath, you get mad downloads, loving to care for people, uh, a nursing home. Now, as I pause, I see somebody just put their birthday in. You cannot just put your birthday in. Everybody's not getting a reading. Okay? If you just got here, I had a contest for people to pick the number that I wrote down, and the number was 26. So if you wrote 25, 26, or 27, put 
the number that you wrote down and put your birthday in, and then I'm going to give you a mini, mini, mini reading, and then we're about to get off of here. Okay? But this is not uh, working on my own business now. Reiki Master. Uh, okay. Oh, Abu, how, how accurate was that? On a scale of 1 to 10, how close was I? Also, uh, Miss Gilmore misses how close was I, if you're still here as well. Um, Miss Melissa, relationships is crazy important to you. You're always pulling for the underdog. Um, yeah, just really nurturing folks is crazy important to you. You might have a tendency to be a little clingy and definitely you speak from your emotions and you have passion in your speech when you give it. You only like bosses and dating bosses. You know what I mean? As far as in relationships, you can't date men that aren't in control of their own stuff. If he ain't got a pair of nuts, it's not that you'll talk down to him, but you want to be with the leader of the team. You want to um, you want to be with someone you know who's who's about who's about it, the captain of the football team or something like that. You ain't about taking second taking second t seconds from somebody. Um, oh yeah 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 yeah. Hold on. I'm a big, um, I like Kabbalistic astrology and, um, in Kabbalistic astrology, that's really studying the North nodes and the South nodes. And I see that you have, um, a South node in Capricorn. So a couple things that I can tell you that you need to be careful of is all these restrictions that you got in your life all these rules and regulations that you have that's that's not that's not really what you came down here to um to accent so oh no 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 your north nose and pisces like me my bag oh yeah well then you gotta learn to let go and let god you have to relax a lot right melissa you you got you got you got trust issues. You need to be trusting God more than you trust in a man. Bang bang. Mama Boo Boo. My website. When you say please repeat, I don't know exactly which one you were, which one you're talking about. Hey Nicole, Monique Gill, you work in a call center right now, actually. Hopefully you the manager, Melissa. Right. Take those. I used to work in a call center. Take those customer service skills you got from a call center and start your own thing. And you know you can you know you could like outsource a call center. You could like um like be a, you know you can start your franchise. I forgot what that business is where you can have other people working for you, but they are working at home and then you're running like the whole operation. I forgot what the name of it is. I I asked one of my friends, if you inbox me, I'll go try to find the name of it. What up, Maze Maze Omega? Okay, I think that's it. Ain't nobody else putting no numbers in. I'm about to be done. Yes, Nicole, we can discuss it in the near future. I just got your message. For sure. If I owe you something, yes, yeah, like a virtual assistant. But you would have your own company of people who do customer service from home and you would be like the you would be like the agency that people come to and then you, let's say they may pay you $30 an hour and you may pay your people $20 an hour or they may pay you $15 an hour and you may pay your people 12 So for every hour they're on the phone, you make $3. So if they work an eight-hour shift, you made $24. But if you got 10 people working for your particular franchise, then you would have made $240 that day. Arise. Is that it? Is that it? Let me see. Shannon Shannon coming in here with the That's it. Arise.com. Thank you, Shannon. 
Oh, if you want to. Okay, so let me repeat one more time. If you guess 25, 26, or 27, I'm doing a mini, mini, mini reading right now. That's it. If you'd like to get a full consultation, go to coachkastrology.info. Okay? Right. But if you pick 25, 26, or 27, you have to type in what number you picked, put a dash, and then put your birthday, and then I can do the reading. Thank you, Naomi. But if you didn't pick that, then just don't worry about it. If you're just getting here like Rabe, hey, my Leo queen, you got to go back and catch the beginning where we talked about living your passion, how to deal with your enemies, and discovering your best life. You sure enough would need to go get you a trill alchemy session because that's my, that's my spiritual surgeon right there. Let me speak on that for a quick second, too, about your alliances. Let me speak on that for a quick second. Can I... No, it's not an answering service. Arise.com. Yeah, coachkastrology.info. Arise.com is what you're looking for. What up, Fatima? Fatima, Melissa is a king of diamonds. So I love it when I love working with folks. So like Rob Bay, she's like my spirit. She's my psychic surgeon. When I need some deep work done on the inside, she ain't. Really, she like astrology, but she ain't finna get all into it. But if I need her to go in and I get some up out of me, trillalchemy.com. That's who I trust. I'm pretty decent with the destiny cards, but when Fatima's in the building, all I do is be quiet. Why would I? It's always somebody doper than you, right? But Fatima may not know nothing about blockchain or plumbing or things like that. We work together as a team. I don't really... I used to get pulled into the competitiveness thing with that old Virgo rising stuff, but the Mars and Gemini get me in too much trouble, too messy, right? But for team, I was just saying that um, Melissa is a king of diamonds, king of hearts, and I was and she's born 1970. She did her own thing, and she works at a call center. So if you want to go deep, deep, deep into the cards, I mess with a little bit. I include it in my sessions, but if you want to go just ham on it, you go see Fatima. Fatima, if you want to put your website in here so somebody can go, so she can go check you, please do so. Rob Bay, if you're still in here, put trillalchemy.com in that joint. Ladies, if it's some real uh, not fluff type stuff that you're looking for, then guess what? That's where you go to Trill Alchemy and get it popped off. Melissa, my website is coachkastrology.info. www. Let me type it in here for you. That's me right there. Mama Boo Boo, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. But look, do y'all see the link that's at the bottom? Magicalmystic.com. I'm going to be in Atlanta with M. Rain on May the 19th, two days after my birthday. I'm going to be wide open. We're celebrating Lilith. My topic is going to be proceed with passion and escape your prison. We got the title tonight, proceed with passion and escape your prison. And I think I'm going to probably have, I think if I do set up a table, I think I might come through with some money oil and just rock that. I like, I, I want, it's going to be tar season. I want jokers to get paid. I think I might make a big bottle so like everybody can get some, put on their wallet. But then I make make some bottles where jokers can buy it. Yeah. I make my own money oil. I know you can get some from Jasmine too, but she taught me how to make mine. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to go around with jokers who like to share. Oh, I don't know Fatima's I don't know Fatima's um uh, Fatima will switch it up on me. I don't know. I have to go to Facebook and find Fatima and see if she has um see if she has her website up there. I don't know. So, I guess I got to everybody. I really appreciate everybody for tuning in. Thank you if you stayed all the way to the end. If you've been here since the beginning, I don't have my website back up yet. I just stepped back out of my cocoon. I had to heal. Thanks for the shout out. Fatima, who bothering you? I don't want... Never mind. Is your number the same? I'll just call you and find out. 
Fatima's an excellent teacher, though. You might have to have the inbox her. Just inbox her and see whether she want to do something. I don't know. But I hold it down until Fatima come back out. <laughs> you ready, Melissa? I mean, you I mean, you are ready, Melissa, and th and you're welcome too. <laughs> uh, I see you shared that Gary V on here. Stop bullshitting yourself. That's the part two. Proceed with passion and stop bullshitting yourself. I might have to put that one up there. Escape your prison and stop bullshitting yourself. Can I put that in there? Proceed with passion and stop bull and stop and cut the bullshit. Ooh. Oh man. Uh, that Melba, this is gonna be crazy. What up, Alice? M, y'all done got me on fire tonight. So fire tonight. Also, we hopefully Emma let me lead a meditation and definitely hopefully let me um put put a prayer together. I stuck, I stuck myself tonight, today cleaning. I was doing some yard work and I got I think I got a splinter or something in my arm. Yeah. Proceed with passion and cut the bullshit. Melissa, are you coming to the uh are you coming to the Magical Mystic Expo? Pasha Phillips, what it do? Um yeah, we're gonna get some meditation on and also we're gonna end this bad boy in prayer. Coach Kair, I really appreciate you. Um, another thing about getting into your passion and discovery is how to write your goals out. So I have a website. I have a free course on writing your goals out. www.coachkclass.com coachkclass.com Come on, it's in Atlanta. Okay, she said, I have some deep childhood traumas to clear. No one bothers me. I know that's right. Coach K class, that's my that's my um, free, this is my free goal writing course. Please take it, everybody who's still here. Please, so Coach K class, please, please, please go over there and learn how to write two goals and it's also the same thing as like invoking the power to invoke okay who just left Atlanta Fatima don't say that using the A and you ain't call me I bet you your phone if your phone number's the same I bet you it rings as soon as this thing go off I'm gonna say prayer right now because Fatima's out of order everybody because she was in Atlanta if she was in St. Louis and I was in the loop, I would call and be like, I'm in your town, but she ain't check in. So I'm going to call and figure out what's that about. Right. You got some... Uh, we we, we going to do this in public. Thanks, everybody, for coming through, man. I also got a meditation course. If you are into meditation, that's also about sending yourself and getting into your passion. I also have the meditation course. So it's a meditation video. It's 17 minutes long. You watch it twice a day for a week. You'll be meditating for the rest of your life. Your children can watch it. Your whole family can watch it. I'm the spiritual pharmacist. I do astrology. I do destiny cards. I'm a blockchain developer. I'm a programmer, software engineer, intuitive astrologer. Yeah. Writer. All of that. Nefertiti Amanet Ra. Peace. And I got a course coming up that's going to teach everybody how to rectify the chart and make sure your birth time is right. Ooh, I got something to give them. Ooh, I got so many classes coming. Y'all just wait till my new website get finished. Stack it. Stack it, stack it, stack it. Stack it, stack it, stack it. Stack it, stack it, stack it. Stack it. <laughs> All right, man. On a scale of 1 to 10, how did I do tonight? And what was the one thing that you took from this conversation that you can use right now? What's the one thing that you took away from this conversation that you can use right now? If you just got here, please press 2 if you share this video so somebody can watch it from the beginning. We did some readings that last 15, 20 minutes, but from the beginning, how to get into your passion, how to deal with your haters, and how to discover your best life. How to keep doing that right there. All right? 
So what was the one thing that you drew from this that you can use right away that was the big eyeball moment? On a scale of 1 to 10, how did I do? And now let's have some closing prayer with the Anna Bacoa. Anna Bacoa, Kijalaki Minka, Tatiya Tezera, Kabel Renan, Amcha Saik Venu, Tahar Venu Nara, Nayagi Bor, Deshay Yekadega, Kavavah Shaman, Varkum Tarum, Rakame, Tazika Taker, Tamid Gaman, Kasim Kadosh, Baru, Tufka, and the hell out of Taken. The Keith Gehel on Chapanese or Craig or Tushka taken. Shabbatanuka bear Lushma, the Zaktanu, your dead Tylamo, Brokshem, Kavu Makuto, Alam Vaye. Peace. Looking up Lilith in my chart. You needed that one. Confirmation I'm the boss, not a worker. It's probably people at your job that are so intimidated by you, Melissa. What? All your jobs, you probably got jokers intimidated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, fam, I'm going to holler at y'all. Peace.